Hello everyone. Hola, buenas tardes. Welcome to this webinar of Argentina of the Beaten Path Travel Destinations. My name is Ariel. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I am part of the team of the National Institute of Tourism Promotion in Argentina. I am a market coordinator. Let me introduce to Mr. Eduardo Piva from our office in Miami. He's a director. Hello, Eduardo. How are you? Hello, Ariel. How are you? Hello, everyone. Fine. Good afternoon and good morning in the West Coast. I'm Eduardo Piva, director of the Argentina Tourist Office for the North American region, based in uh, the city of Miami, Florida, in the States. And it's a pleasure to welcome you to this webinar call of the Be Argentina of the Beaten Park Travel Destination. I hope this webinar is useful for you and helps with uh, sales in the in the future for our travel destination. Uh, now I want to introduce you to Marina Farinha, who is, uh, will be in charge of uh, updating on these topics. Thank you very much. Uh, have a nice trip. Thank you, Eduardo. Hi, Marina. How are you? Hi, Ariel. Hi, Eduardo. Thank you very much for your presentation. I'm very glad to be here in, in order to show you a little bit of uh, different of my country. Okay, just a couple of things before we start. There is a special field where you can write all the questions, okay? We will be answering them at the end of the presentation. And also this webinar is being recorded, so uh, a few hours after we finish, you will be receiving an email with the link to uh, watch it again. Okay, so before we start with the presentation, let uh, we are going to play a short video of Argentina. Excellent. So Argentina is waiting for you and Marina is going to tell us what is waiting for you in Argentina. Thank you, Marina. It's all yours. Okay. Thank you very much, Ariel, once more. Uh, I'm very glad to be here and having this chance of showing you parts of my country that sometimes they are not uh, that much commercialized in your, uh, in your regions. Usually, I know you know very well are most touristic uh, parts of the country and that's why they is called the of the beaten path of travel destinations. Um, I'd like to start this presentation uh, helping a little bit with uh, this information. Some of you were making questions to Improtour, so we'll, we are very glad to confirm that since several years ago, uh, citizens of USA and Canada had not to pay any uh, fee, any reciprocity fee like it happens in the past. So you are very more than welcome to come and visit without any extra fees to pay before entering the country. Um, another helpful uh, thing is to show a map. So we'll start with this map of Argentina and if you don't mind, I'll start giving you uh, some little tips of the country in case of location, uh, limits and things that will help you to know a little more before we start our uh, webinar. Um, Argentina, as you can see, is all the map painted in colors. Uh, we have different neighbors. On the west side, our neighbor is Chile. On the north, Bolivia and Paraguay. Little north yet, Brazil. And on the east, Brazil and Uruguay. Uh, this is a, a quite large country. We have a surface of 2.8 million kilometers, square kilometers, which in square miles, it's the equivalent to more than a million square miles. 
and this is the second largest country in South America after Brazil. Uh, from north to south, the extension of the country is 3,700 kilometers, which the equivalent is 2,300 miles. And if you go from east to west, it's 1,400 kilometers wide, and it's equivalent to 890 miles. Uh, we are not uh, using the same expression you do in the, in the northern hemisphere that you say uh, when you go uh, countrywide. Well, we cannot, it's uh, quite narrow, but it's a very long country spread from north to south, divided in 23 provinces, with a capital city in Buenos Aires. Now I'm going to the next map, but let me show you the loop we are doing today. We are going to start visiting the area of Litoral. Here it is painted on a light green color. Then we are going to move to the north over here in kind of yellowish light color. Then we are visiting one province of Cusho in this lila or light violet color. And then we move south to Patagonia. We'll visit the north gate of Patagonia, not the most touristic one, a little um, northern than that. And then we'll move to the very opposite side and we are going to visit the other northern gate of Patagonia on the Atlantic Ocean side for uh, finishing the loop back to Buenos Aires. Uh, it's not going to be focused in Buenos Aires city because we are more tempting to show you other destinations. We have four seasons well marked in our territory. So we have all the different climates from north to south, different landscapes, that give us a lot of advantages at the moment of tourism. And um, for starting the presentation, maybe something helpful, you need to think of this map upside down compared to United States and Canada. What I mean is, in our map, when we speak about north, we speak about warmer weather. And when we speak about south, we speak about cold weather, you know, states, when you go south, for example, Florida, you go to the warm weather, you go to the beach. This is the totally opposite side. Patagonia is the coldest weather. You find mountains, glaciers, snow, skiing resorts. North, you have more the uh, high plateau. You have the deserts on the west. You have the fantastic jungles on the east. Other tips that can be a little helpful is we have the highest mountain in the Americas is located on the Andean mountain range in the province of Mendoza and it's called Aconcagua with an altitude of 7,000 meters above the sea level. This is about 21,000 feet. Um, and we have some interesting, I just like to give you some interesting uh, information about Argentina. For example, the highest uh, wine cellar is located in our country in the province of Jujuy over here. 3,400 meters above the sea level, 11,000 feet. Oh, we have, for example, the southernmost cellar, which is located close to here, to the city of Esquel, in the province of Chubut. And we have, for example, one, one cellar, which is underwater in the east coast of the same province, uh, we have a guide where you have to dive for getting a bottle of water. So the effort really worth it. And we have for second year consecutive, a winery in the area of Mendoza by the Andean mountain range that we can see are going to move to uh, different uh, heritage sites. This is marked by UNESCO. UNESCO works together with the um, United Nations and UNESCO is only dedicated to try and preserve uh, cultural sites, natural sites, and sites that are oh, things that are intangible, like the tango music, it's an intangible uh, heritage of the world. Once they are declared heritage of the world, it means it's not only property of the country where they belong, but they are shared by all the communities. So the ones I'm going to uh, share to you now, they belong to you too. These UNESCO sites uh, that we will see are along this presentation, so i let you know. In total, we have 13 sites. Today, we can only see four of them. When you come to Argentina, usually the gate, the entrance is Buenos Aires, which is here located on the mouth on the entrance of Plata River through the Atlantic Ocean side. And we have the International Airport Plaza Domestic Airport City. 
This gave us, give us perfect connectivity with all the provinces of Argentina. We have flights to every single capital city of the different provinces of the country. Uh, Argentina, like Canada, we don't call the political divisions states, like United States, we call them provinces, provincias, like Canada or Spain. We have in total 23, and Buenos Aires is the federal district where our government is settled. So from here, we are going to start to start our journey. By the way, we are today speaking from Buenos Aires. I am from Buenos Aires. We have a beautiful day. Uh, here is the afternoon. I know that some of you are in the morning, some in the afternoon. And we will start by this region called Litoral. Litoral, it's uh, referring to a place that is located between big rivers. It's a Mesopotamian region. This green color region here, remember Buenos Aires was down there. This uh, region is surrounded, is framed by very huge and beautiful rivers. And it has, of course, a for the falls, uh, to marshlands, to wetlands. And we are going specifically to a province called Corrientes. This one here, usually you hear about the uh, falls in Iguazu. You can see the name up there. But we are going a little southern from Iguazu to visit the province of Corrientes. Because we have a very unique uh, place that is a national park today. We have a provincial park and a national park. Okay. Marina, we are having place, some. Marina. Which is called the sorry. Esteros could... del Ibera. Mm. Marina, sorry, could you hear me? Yes. We have some problems with your, our you audio sometimes. Now, yes. Yes. Uh, if you could check it out, because sometimes it's uh, cutting out. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Now I think that it's it's okay. Let okay. me know so if it's go. failing again. Yes. Okay, go on. Thanks. Okay, I'm sorry. So you're welcome. So we are located in the province of Corrientes over here, one of the provinces of the Litoral region, and we are going to visit Esteros de Libera. This word refers Esteros. Marina, I'm sorry, we lost you again. Uh, I'm sorry, could you try with your the mobile The wetlands, phone? Ibera, it is a native word, comes from the Guarani language, original inhabitants of this region, and it means shiny water. Ariel? Yes, you have a delay also in your audio. That's a problem also. Uh, is it possible if you could check to connect with your mobile phone, maybe just the audio? And we help you with the slides. Okay. Just no, I, I just moved the slides by, by mistake. It was not a delay. Okay. I just, just pressed it in order to try to make better the, the sound. Sorry, I'm still in the We're lagoon. To... I'm still in Esteros de Libera. Yes, that's right. Okay. Okay, um, I'm still in the lagoon because I was trying to tell you that this was born as a provincial park and uh, a person that maybe you've heard about him, this is an American citizen called uh, Douglas Tompkins. He's, uh, well, maybe you know him because he was the creator of, uh, the former uh, creator of the uh, brand, the clothing brand North Face. Uh, this gentleman, he was very dedicated to preserve areas around the world and he was very interested in these wetlands. So through his ONG, he bought part of the lands here. He bought uh, 150,000 hectares. That is about 370,000 acres. And uh, in an agreement with an Argentinian government, they created the National Park Ibera. So we had the provincial park, we had the national park, and the idea is to preserve this natural environment. Here you can see a little map of the, uh, the park itself. It has 10 ways of acceding, but let me tell you, from Buenos Aires, the easiest is to fly to the city of Corrientes, and then you have a drive of a little more than one hour in order to arrive to the national park. In this park, the kind of accommodations are basically a kind of lodge, very beautiful colonial estancias, this kind of constructions with an outside porch to sit outside, to enjoy the nature, to have a meal. 
kind of inclusive services, all inclusive because you don't have a city that close by. So these places give you all the meals and all the tours. Usually the tours, uh, they are provided by the same lodges and with local guides, people that's born and raised in the area. They know perfectly the fauna and flora, which is very rich, it's very wild. You have a lot of things to see over there and easy to accede. Uh, most of the tours can go by motorboats or uh, paddling boats. You need to canoe over there. You can kayak, you can uh, kayaking, canoeing, horseback riding are very common activities. Uh, photographic safaris and bird watching because we have more than 360 species of birds in the Esteros. Look how close you can get to the fauna. Of course, these are not dangerous animals, so the guy knows perfectly he can get close to the capybara. This is a family of capybara, the biggest rodent in the world. And here you can notice why it is hard sometimes to use motorboats, because the flora is very abundant. You have a lot of floating plants and lilies and, and, and different weeds, so it's hard to use motorboats and you can use this kind of canoes. Um, Let's see, for example, some of the fauna. We have the Karaja monkey. It's a howler monkey. Um, beautiful, beautiful site to visit. We have the caimans. These are more nocturnal animals. So you have night tours with the guides always. You cannot go by yourself. And here you have uh, one of the species of the bird. This is a stork. It's a black necked stork. But you have, as I said, more than 360 species. The marsh deer, very easy to spot it. And we have um fishing activities so if you are more fond of fishing this is fish you can see here is one of the local fishes we call it dorado the goldfish or some people call it the uh, river uh, tiger um it's almost it's always a very good idea to know about the gastronomy of the areas of course for people that have dietary restrictions, in all the regions I'm going to present, you have vegetarian options, you have vegan options. It is very good to advise always to you, agents, uh, your clients can tell you in advance so we can be prepared for your clients. But here you can see one of the dishes, which is the grilled fish. This is a papu, it's another local species, and the beautiful lemons and onions because we have a lot of citrix growing here. The other thing that grows a lot north of Corrientes and Iguazu area or Misiones area is the mate, mate herb roach. We can visit the places where they dry the leaves of this plant called mate. Mate, it is not uh, mate, it's not an English word, it's mate, it's a native word that means companion. And this is the way of drinking it. In the picture you can observe the gore. The gore has all the dry leaves inside. It has a straw with a filter. You pour hot water and you drink the water through the straw. Mm -hmm. This is a, a very, a very accurate taste. We grow on this flavor. It's not that easy. It's a bitter tea. It's so, uh, similar to the oriental green tea, but bitter. We add some sugar or honey. And um, another thing we have in this region together with the mate is the chipa. These are all native names, but what you are seeing there it is a kind of a cheese bread. In fact, it does not use white flour. This one uses cassava or manioc flour and cheese. And another thing, I don't have a picture of that one, a little harder to get it. It is called jacarikia. This is a kind of a bark that we adopted it from the natives. Today is like, you know, a, a very unique, delicious candy. It's a bark. You need to boil it for about 15 hours and then you treat it with syrup. And it's, uh, it's like a candy. It's very delicious from the area. Remember that from the area of the Esteros, we are going to the center of the country. Oh, I, I think I didn't mention on the first map. Sorry, this is the very middle of the country. Let me show you where. There. We've been in the uh, area of the uh, waters here, the marshlands and the wetlands. And now we are in the center of the country. How could I forget to mention this? It's the second most important province in Argentina with the second largest city, the city of Cordoba, where we are going to be next. This is a hub, a touristic hub. We have another international airport there. We have air connectivity to all, all the provinces, and we have international flights, even flights from the States landing uh, Miami, I know, I think other destinations too, landing in the Cordoba airport. 
of course, after uh, all the situation we are living in the world, let's see how uh, connectivity has come back. But so far, we have very good air connectivities in Argentina. Cordoba, let's go to the next picture. It is a, an area that was grown, was based, in fact, by a religious order, the Jesuits monks. Uh, you know, the Spaniards sent the Jesuits to the Americas in the 1500 to evangelize, sorry, the native groups that live in the Americas. But this branch of the Catholicism, they prefer to go farther and they prefer not just to evangelize, to teach religion, but to teach, to educate people in different uh, matters of culture and to receive education from them. In fact, the matter that I showed you before, it was transmitted from the natives through the monks to the rest of the population and today is our national drink. What you are looking at here is the main square of Cordoba city and you can see the monument in honor to the Maximum hero of Argentina, General San Martin, liberator of our country. And in front across the street, this beautiful building which is highlighted by illumination, it is part of the Manzana Jesuitica. What I mean with Manzana, these are the, the headquarters. It is a square full of different buildings. It is a group of buildings belonging to the Jesuit monks. This is a UNESCO site. So here we have one of our sites. Um, the Manzana or, or the, the Jesuitic headquarters. Here we have the first National University of Cordoba. We have the, the church, we have a chapel, we have the residence of the monks, and all of these can be visited by uh, tourists, by visitors, of course. Um, the other thing that we uh, got from the monks was the wine. This was one of the first areas. Imagine they arrived in the 15, the end of 1500s, almost 1600s, to this territory, and they needed the wine for the mass. So they tried to get a better quality of wine, bringing the roots, the roots, the vines from Europe. So this is how we started with the wines. And let me tell you, this province, it has a great agricultural and industrial development. So this is shown through the amount of cultural activities we can find. In Cordoba, you have adventure, you have relax, you have nature, you have nightlife, and you have festivals. Let me tell you, uh, most of the people in Argentina, when they have, for example, breathing problems, asthma, things like that, they go to Cordoba because of the pure and beautiful air you can breathe there. The kind of landscapes we will find in Cordoba are rivers, uh, hills, uh, uh, you have a, a rural tourism, you have adventure tourism, you can do rafting, trekking, hiking, horseback riding, bird watching, and the wine that I mentioned that was developed by the Jesuits monks. The wineries we can visit, the wine cellars we can visit in Cordoba are smaller and not like the industrial wine cellars we can find in the area of Mendoza, in the area of the Andes. These are more uh, smaller, uh, particular ones because the origin were the Jesuits. And this is one of the estancias or farms. We can translate it as farm. Uh, the idea of the Jesuits was establishing this kind of very important agricultural developments just to support, to sustain their project of education and uh, developing in the area. So we have very important estancias or Jesuit farms that give today the origin of very important cities in Cordoba province. The farms and the manzana, the headquarters I showed you before, both of them are cultural UNESCO heritage sites. Um, in the case of the estancias, we have some important ones. Well, I can tell you the names, but it won't make uh, much of a difference to remember. Colonia Garocha, Jesus Maria, where today we have a still uh, many different activities. It will call your attention that I posted now a picture that says Che Guevara's Museum. Um, I don't know if you have uh, a, any record about this uh, gentleman related to Argentina, maybe you do. Ernesto Guevara, that is his uh, real name, Che, it is a nickname. In Argentina, the word Che is used for calling somebody's attention. In, instead of telling, hey, 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 we say Che, and we call the attention of someone else. As he moved along different countries that were not Argentina during his campaign, uh, they baptized him or they used to call him by Che Guevara. 
this is his house, his childhood. He was born in this house and he lived only the first part of his childhood in this house, which today is a museum. It's a very controversial character. If I have to tell you, he was born and just lived the first years of his life here. Then he became um, a rebel, a renegade, and he started moving along South America. Remember the movie and the book, uh, Motorcycle Diaries? And then, of course, he moved to Central America, and we know the end of the story with uh, his friend uh, Fidel Castro. But um, interesting to know, maybe you didn't know, he was an Argentinian character, but he never had any more relation with the country after that. This is cute. This is uh, weird. We are seeing Oktoberfest, and you say, but Marina, you are taking me to Germany. Well, in fact, we have a little piece of Germany here in Córdoba. There is a village called Villa General Belgrano, where we celebrate the Oktoberfest. There are only two places in the world outside Germany that has this special festivity, it's a major festivity. Uh, one place is in Brazil, the place is called Blumenau, and the other one is here. And this is due to the amount of immigration we received. Uh, we receive a lot of Germans. In fact, we receive them from the Prussian uh, the Prussian Empire, so before Germany was declared Germany, uh, Austrians, uh, Swiss guys, Germans, all the territory moved a lot for colonizing in the region, and this is the result, beautiful celebrations with very good beer. Let's see what's coming next. Well, we have different celebrations, not only Oktoberfest. In January, we have the biggest festival um, in, in music. Then we have Rodeo and Folk, uh, in February, we have different festivities in the province of uh, Cordoba. And about the road wine, uh, I, the wine road, sorry, I explained to you that we have these different colonies. Remember, they were the Jesuitic farms, like Colonia Carosha, and today they are dedicated to this rural tourism. It's fun to go in the car, to have your wine, to explore the vineyards. There are many different activities you can practice there. And it is really a very good weather all year round. This is one of the cases where I will tell you Cordoba, you can visit it all year round. We don't have seasons here. Um, we are located in one of the hills. This is not a very high one. In fact, um, the average altitude in Cordoba is sometimes 2,000 meters, 600 feet, uh, 6,000 feet, sorry. And it's very easy to spot condors. So, Nature tourism, remember trekking, climbing, uh, hiking, you can practice all the sports. And let's go to delicious gastronomy. There you can see specialties of Cordoba, delicatessens. We have different cold meats and we have cheeses. The roham is fantastic, salami, um, everything is delicious in Cordoba. And the alfajores, that's a cookie that we grow up with them since we are children. We have two cookies, and in middle it's all filled with dulce de leche, the main caramel that we eat in the country, and in mostly uh, many regions of uh, South America, many countries of South America. We are moving now to the north, northwest of Argentina. Let's see the map. We departed from Buenos Aires, we visited aquí Corrientes in el litoral, we went in the middle of the country to Córdoba. Now I'll take you northwest towards the northern side of Argentina. There are many provinces here, but we will focus in Catamarca, in La Rioja, and we will combine it with this province that is not in color because it belongs to a different region, but they are very uh, connected, that is San Juan. Um, I would like to give you some tips of the region before. Um, this area has, it's very related with different important matters. For example, the sun is very sunny, the colors, the history, the culture, and the landscapes are in general going from a transition kind of vegetation like a high altitude junga or, or uh, jungle or kind of very dense forest, in fact, very humid and rainy. In the middle of the northern side, you can find the fertile valleys, and moving towards the Andes, to the west, you'll find the salt flats, the mountains, snow-capped mountains, and volcanoes. The gastronomy of this region is different from the other ones we saw here. Um, it's an Andean kind of gastronomy. We have Andean potatoes, we have quinoa, the cereal. 
we have peppers, stew, we have empanadas, I will explain a little later, and they consume uh, different exotic meats, like for example, the llama steak. Uh, we have different kind of wine. Remember, the uh, Jesuits, they grow their different wines, reds and whites, but mainly for beginners the mass and later for commercializing. But here, we have a very good project in several years ago, many, many years ago, which are the uh, high altitude wines. Uh, this kind of grapes, they receive a lot of sun all year round, so they need to protect the, the grape and the skin gets thicker, they produce more sugar, the sugar turns into alcohol, graduation is higher in these wines, but they have a very good body. They are fresh, aromatic, and perfumed. The festivities are different, are more um, based and influenced by the Inca Empire. We will see that we have a big connection with the Incas. Peru is much northern, but they used to be a trail communicating all of us together. So we have Pachamama, which is uh, thanking the Mother Nature, Inti Raimi, which is helping the sun, uh, Fiesta del Poncho, Poncho is part of the outfit, very colorful in the north, and the carnivals, that is nothing to do with the, our friends Brazilians. This kind of carnivals are typical costumes, dances and food, and thinking always the nature, because they're a very tough region to live. Handicrafts, archaeological sites, paleontological sites, and many activities you can practice in the north. Biking, trekking, horseback riding, uh, sandboard, paragliding. We are going to be um, close to um, a very iconic road. This is just a picture of it, which is the road number 40. You know, you have the iconic road number 66. Well, for us, the iconic road is 40. It goes from the very tip at the north of the country till the very south. And the extension of the road, you, due to this bending places you see here, it is 5,000 kilometers of extension. Um, at the very north, still keeping in this region, you always need hydration. You need water, cockatiel for blood pressure. Usually you're moving in very high uh, plateaus or high altitudes. So uh, outfits are very important. The thermal amplitude at the north is very marked and the temperatures really drop very dramatically at the ends of the tours. Tours are usually full days. And um, layers are very welcome, hot, sunglasses and sunscreens. Um, you have to consider you will be moving from 2,500 meters, this is about 8,000 feet, towards 4,200 meters, which is about 13,000 feet in only kilometers from east to west. And visiting this area, the northern area, uh, in my opinion, best part is the fall, the autumn from March to June, or the spring, September to December, as the uh, winter is extremely cold, in fact, we can have temperatures minus zero, speaking of Celsius, really very cold. And um, in uh, summer, we have uh, some more rains and can affect the different roads. So you can see road number 40, the northern region. And we are going to start visiting our first uh, uh, spot. All the region has fantastic accommodations. You will find their hotels from three, four, even five stars. So all the accommodations you can imagine. We are choosing Catamarca because it's not a place, it's a wall of stones, and it belongs to a place called El Xincal. Here we, I'm going to speak about another UNESCO uh, heritage site. This is a cultural heritage site, which is called the Capacñan. Capacñan is a project with, between different countries, of course, supported by UNESCO to preserve archaeological sites, which uh, starts from Ecuador, it goes through uh, Colombia, goes through Peru, Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina. What you are seeing here is a ceremonial site. You can distinguish a kind of a pyramid and the steps, the guys coming up the steps in between the jungle. So the previous picture and this one belongs to the Capacñan, the preservation of uh, the road of the Incas from the Cusco Empire, the headquarters 
of the Inca Empire. Until this point, Catamarca in Argentina, so far, this is the, the longest they extended, the Capacñán, it is the uh, principal road, that is the meaning of Capacñán, principal road. It was a commercial road between all the administration centers of the Incas in order to commercialize products and uh, provide their communities with food. So this was an administration center of the Incas, it's called Xincal. Um, close to here, two hours away from this point, you can visit some mines, and let me tell you about it, uh, where you can uh, see the process of obtaining the Inca Rose, which is our national stone, Rodocrosita, uh, Rodocrosite, or Inca Rose. And uh, it's a very cultural area. Uh, this is a complex of about more than 100 buildings all together in Xincal de Quimivil. That is the complete uh, name of the place. And it's a UNESCO site, as I mentioned. We move to a place which for us is a um, national monument, it's preserved, Ruta del Adobe. Adobe is adobe, you know, the, the cooked bricks, they are cooked, I mean, they are they're dried in the sun, it's a mud bricks, and uh, Ruta is road. This road, it goes along 50 kilometers, this is about 30 miles, and it goes from a city called Tinogasta till a city called Ciambala. All along that territory, you can find this kind of constructions with this beautiful reddish color, which have been there. These constructions are not only churches, religious buildings, there are houses too. They've been there for three to 400 years in a perfect condition that you can see in the picture because uh, the dry of the weather, it helps to maintain the materials, the walls. And this is a, um, a very important historical site and it is a national monument for Argentina. It is a preserved area. When you get to the end of the road, you get to Fiambala. And Fiambala is an area of hot springs. Remember, we are closer to the Andes. The Andes is a very young range of mountains that is still growing, and it has a lot of volcanic activities. We have thousands of volcanoes between Chile and Argentina. We have these hot springs. We have uh, salt flats. We have uh, glaciers. Everything is a result of this young range rising. So the hot springs in Fiambala, they are built directly on the rock. You have different pools with different temperatures, like on steps. So you can climb and get uh, a, a hotter or colder water. It is delicious. It's beautiful to spend time there. Um, of course, accommodations are fantastic. And it is the gate to do some trekking and views to different look at points to Los Seis Miles. Seis Miles stands for the word uh, 6,000. I'm going to show you in a minute that picture because Fiambala uh, and Chile to this area, it is an area of um, wineyards, of vineyards, sorry, of uh, wine cellars. So in this case, we have this Vinos de Altura, the high altitude wines. What I meant is those wines that have a lot of body, but we can find them delicious. And one of the wines that identify Argentina, that usually people identify us by the uh, Malbec, which is a reddish wine. In fact, it is a white wine that is called Torrontes. And that is a very, very traditional wine from Argentina. Here we have Los Seis Miles. Seis Miles stands for 6,000. There are a range of volcanoes. You have a perfect lagoon here. Usually we can uh, see the flamingos. You know, flamingos are not only tropical birds. We have a species that lives all along the lagoons in the high plateau and in Patagonia. Um, we have a reservation of vicuñas, which is one of the camels in South America. And we have the look at points for the volcanoes that all of them are in the average of six thousand meters above the sea level. This is about 18,000 feet above the sea level. Um, it's in a spectacular view. Uh, if you are an expert, of course, there, there are climbers in this in these mountains. We don't do it with regular tourism. But in general, uh, the people that need to get trained for going later to the Himalayas, they practice on these uh, volcanoes that we have here. Uh, you can practice, of course, uh, in these areas, trekking and hiking and bear watching and photographies that are uh, very, very unique.
It's very panoramic in yeah, all the north of Argentina. Um, going towards the mountains, we are going to find this unique spot. This is a um, preserved area, it's not a national park. The only way of acceding is with uh, local guides and four-wheel trucks. You cannot wander because this is a very old formation. It's a um, uh, pomice uh, stone field. The pomice stone is a porous stone. It's a result of a volcanic activity, of course. Uh, the idea, or, or sorry, the research is said that this was starting with volcanism, with volcanic movements from 20 million years ago. But this could be formed about 10,000 years ago, finished to form these rocks that you see and these corridors by the erosion provided uh, by the uh, rivers, by the water, and by the uh, wind, which is a very good uh, effect when he has to um, erode this kind of a stones. It's a porous stone and is very used for cosmetics and for um, construction too. In Catamarca, we have the ladies that they are the, the wearers of the ponchos. Here you see the lady with the loom. She's working on her wool. The wool are usually coming from the other camels we have here in the north, which are the llamas and the alpacas. Llamas and alpacas are domestic animals, while vicuñas and guanacos that we'll see at the south, that's the fourth camel, they are wild animals. Um, but we use the, the wool from these animals. These ladies do a very hard process to dye in different colors using roots, uh, bugs, or plants, or flowers, and they get these beautiful ponchos and uh, uh, blankets or any kind of handcraft, and you get them all along the north. The next province, remember we are here, Catamarca, we move south to La Rioja. Always good connectivity, easy to fly to the capital city of these provinces, and then we visit the different regions. Um, La Rioja, it has, for example, at the western side, you can have a perfect view here of the Andes, and this is a llama, one of the four camelids we have in the in the South American continent. Um, the the um, uh, west part, you can find a um, provincial reservation called Laguna Brava. It's a huge lagoon, and there we have a protected area for vicuñas, flamingos, but that is a little high, it's 4,300 meters above the sea level. This is about 14,000 feet. And they go to the south of the city of La Rioja, you'll find this gorge, Quebrada del Condor. Quebrada stands for gorge, it's a kind of geographical formation. And condor, of course, I don't have to mention how majestic is this bird. Even though it's a vulture, it's very ugly when it's standing in the ground. It is the most magnificent bird when flying. It's, um, it's three meters uh, wingspan, this is about nine feet, it's a huge bird. Is the biggest land bird, then we have the biggest uh, sea bird, but this is the biggest land bird. And you can get very close to observe the condors. It's a unique experience. Um, we can find here the wine roads again. And of course, the, the star of the wines is the Torrontes, this white one that I mentioned, that represents more Argentina than the Malbec. But in fact, the Malbec is much more commercialized. But we start seeing the olive trees and the, and the nut trees. So we have fantastic dry fruits and we have uh, very delicious wines and olive oils. This is all in the uh, valley of uh, Famatina and Chilecito before getting to the national park Talampaya or Talampasha. We pronounce it like, shh, like a sound. Um, Talampasha, it is another UNESCO site together with the next park I'll show you. They are a few kilometers away, even though they are in different provinces, Talampasha and Ischihualasto, the next park I'll show you. Usually you can visit them on a same uh, package. You can stay on a city close to the both parks. The city is in La Rioja, it's called Villa Union. It's not a very high altitude here. We are coming to 1,200 meters is about 4,000 feet above the sea level. And you can visit, you can do full day tours, and in my opinion is the best, because there are many circuits you can do in each park, uh, in Talampasha mainly, you have many trekking circuits, biking circuits, 
and um, you can combine visiting the other national park. The walls that you can see over here in red stones can reach the 150 meters. It's about 500 feet high. It is really huge. Talampasa means dry river, and this is uh, all again native names, different native communities. And these are not only uh, beautiful. These are very unique archaeological and paleontological sites. We have the fossils of dinosaurs. We have petroglyphs that are 1,500 years old. Uh, this park and the next one belong to the Triassic period. We are speaking about 250 million years ago. And you have these beautiful forms carved in the rock. This kind of sculptures are just naturally made. So this is a natural heritage of the world. This belongs to you too, guys. And this was all carved by the wind and by, in older times, the rivers. Uh, you can visit the canyon of Talampasha, you can do trekking, biking, there are night tours whenever we have full moon. We can visit the Rainbow of uh, the Rainbow Canyon and we can visit the Lost City because of the geoforms. It looks exactly uh, like a city, like a lost city in the middle of the park. Fauna and flora, you have foxes, you have rias, um, you have um, armadillos, which are very cute. And um, still being at the north, but a little southern, we still have some influence from the uh, people of the high plateau. But we consume a lot of corn, beans, peppers. Here you can see how they dry these peppers. This is very common to see along the roads. So very colorful roads, very scenic roads all along these territories. Olives. And we have the lady here with the empanadas. This is one of the most delicious dishes we can have all along the country. But in the north, they have a big competition to see which province makes the more interesting and delicious one with different ingredients. Usually you have grounded beef or cat beef. You have some of them put eggs, some of them put um, olives, some put raisins, make little sweeter. Uh, lots of condiments, of course very beautifully baked on the oven and we can have tamales is this dish in the middle which is wrapped it is not the mexican tamal the tamales here at the north the base is corn we use uh, uh, the grounded corn we cook it with a lot of butter and uh, we add many different condiments it's delicious it can have some beef or some chicken and it's wrapped in the corn leaves uh, you can accompany all the dishes like the stews, here you see the beans, with different uh, peppers or spices, or you can have hot sauces, and everything is very tasty. Remember, we are close to the altitude, so we still use high condiments. And dessert is made, for example, by this fruit, typical fruit from the north is the cachote. Cachote is in the family of the squash, and we use it as a dessert and we eat figs and quesillo, which is this goat cheese in a very, very soft flavor. It's not a strong goat cheese. Remember I told you, please grab in mind, we are going to visit the two national parks together. So we enter the region of Cusho in order to connect La Rioja, now you don't have it in color because it belongs to the north, with San Juan, where we are going to visit the park of East Chihualasto. I know it's a hard name, it is another native name, and it means where the moon lays. We call it in, in Spanish the moon ballet, el valle de la luna, that is how we call it, to make it easier. But the name is, is Chihualasto, another Triassic formation. This one still have, has more marked for the paleontologists as a very clear evolution of the earth through the study of the rocks the superior, the middle, and the inferior uh, periods of the Triassic. Here, you have to think that you are walking in trails where the dinosaurs walked 180 million years ago. All of the parks with the guides, with the vehicles, with all the communications, with all the safety, and preserving the area because we have fossils that need to be preserved. Um, photographing, of course, uh, fauna and flora similar to La Rioja, the foxes, the rias, um, uh, the llamas, 
And another interesting site in this San Juan province, that is that we have towards the mountains, the, the pre-Andean area, the national park El Leoncito. This national park, it is in a very good location for the observation of the stars, very pristine skies. That's why you see the observatory here. You stay in a city close to it called Barreal, and you can um, go by day and by night for using the telescope. Close to the observatory, we have Pampa El Leoncito, where the most practiced sport, it is the uh, wind carts. Very fun sport. Um, usually between La Rioja and San Juan means the two parks that I mentioned recently, both of them UNESCO heritage. I uh, will recommend you to stay three to four days, maybe four days, uh, four nights, sorry. It's very advisable to stay in the area. And again, remember the same kind of weather conditions, whether spring or fall, autumn, to visit all those places. Uh, in order to enjoy better your stay in the north of Argentina. San Juan is going a little closer to a more friendly kind of weather and altitude landscape. And the wine road is more related to all the kinds of wine. Here we can go more to the Malbec. You know that the wines were introduced by the Spaniards and by the monks here in the Argentinian territory through the north. They came with Christopher Columbus, Panama Canal, they came down south, entered by Chile to Argentina, and we developed a very good wine industry, one of the best ones in the world compared to other countries. We are in a very high level. As I mentioned, we won a uh, second year this year, consecutive award of the best wine of the world, but you can really enjoy all of the wines since the reddish till the, the white ones. In the vineyards, in the wine cellars, we have different experiences. Uh, you can um, today, for example, have uh, bike tours along the vineyards. You can do horseback riding. You can have meals where they uh, do the uh, maridaje. Maridaje is to teach us how to combine the best wine do, with the best dishes in order to have the better flavors of the food. Um, in San Juan, San Juan is called the province, the, the province of the sun because we have sun 360 days a year and we have of course the festivity of the sun in February. One of the most uh, marked wines in San Juan it is called Shira or Sira as we pronounce it and um, it has like uh, soft tannins and it's a frutal kind of wine and the beef is delicious it's called Punta de Espalda it's close to the um, to the ribs and it's a very delicious uh, beef. Sorry if there is any vegetarian listening uh, to us. You know that our culture needs to, to involve some beef in our day life. I don't believe that we take breakfast with that. Huh? It's not true. Um, <laughs> welcome to the next region, which is Paragonia. It's the last region I'm going to speak about today. I'm going to speak about first the west side of Paragonia. And then I'm going to the east side of Paragonia. Uh, but Marina, are you taking us to Patagonia? Are you there? Because we couldn't hear you now again. Just check your connection. We were great till now, and now we can hear you again. I don't know if you can difficult her to me. This is the ski resort. It's 2000. Yeah. No, you have a, de a delay oh, also. So yes, now yes, but yes, you have a delay. Oh. Oh, go on, go on, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, Cathedral Mountain is 2,400 meters high. This is about 7,800 feet. And it's the main ski resort. Our ski resort starts from the area southern of San Juan, the area of Mendoza, in fact. And here we have one of the most important ski resorts. We call it the sister city of Aspen in the States because usually instructors that work in Aspen, they work here in Bariloche in the ski resort. We celebrate every year uh, between June, June, June and July, sorry, which is the beginning of our winter. Remember the map upside down. Um, the uh, snow 
festivity, which is a very huge festivity in the region. Um, the Lakes region, it is using the road number 40. Remember the icon road that I was, iconic road that I was mentioning to you? And it communicates the city of Bariloche with the city of San Martin de los Andes, here on the map, in the province of Neuquén. In fact, most of the road is inside the province of Neuquén. Just a little part runs inside Bariloche, uh, sorry, inside the province of Rio Negro. But it communicates Bariloche and San Martin de los Andes. It goes along uh, 190 kilometers. This is about 118 miles, more or less, through forests, uh, beautiful lakes, mountains, snow capped mountains. It's a unique landscape, very scenic. You have uh, catamarans to sail in the different lakes. And uh, it crosses two national parks, the park Lanin, where we have a volcano that gives the name to the park, and Nahuel Huapi, which is the main lake in front of the uh, Bariloche city. The um, uh, Nahuel Huapi Lake, the name is, uh, is uh, another native name from the Mapuifungun, the Mapuche language. It means the island of the, of the tiger. In fact, we don't have tigers or jaguars. It was the puma. And um, let me see if we can pass the picture. Um, Ariel, can you tell me if you're seeing Siete yes. Lagos no, picture? Siete Lagos, that's right, yes. Siete Lagos, correct, sorry, it was a little delay. Siete Lagos means seven lakes. That is a road we can do from Bariloche to San Martin de los Andes or upside down, San Martin de los Andes to Bariloche, where you can find, in fact, seven lakes with totally different characteristics sorry you have very blue dark blue lakes very very deep lakes you can find some hidden lakes in between the forest you need to do some trails to find them in very emerald colors remember all the area volcanic activity and glaciation form these beautiful landscapes and let's see the city of San Martin de los Andes, what it can offer to us. Well, apart from the beauty that you see there, this picture was taken in the fall. Remember June, uh, um, April, June is our fall. It's totally opposite to the Northern Hemisphere. And San Martin de los Andes is at the shore of a lake called Lacar. It offers you a lot of activities, uh, trekking, hiking, camping, kayaking, canoeing, there are trails that you can follow, very easy trails for enjoying the nature. And lately we are having in the region the glamping, you know, the very glamorous kind of camping that is offered to you. Uh, there is a ski resort here in San Martin de los Andes, which is called Chapelco, that is 1,900 meters high, it's about 6,500 feet. And we have um, a sport fishing activities, uh, you can get uh, basically trout, the rainbow trout and the brown trout, but it's a uh, cut and release. All these areas are cut and release. You can do fly fishing if you like fly fishing. So uh, lots of the spots. And the good, play, the good thing of Patagonia is usually it's quite isolated in a good sense. It's you can join your own space and the, of course, the tranquility of a stain on this area. In between Bariloche and San Martin de los Andes in the same lakes route, this is a city that it's really worth to mention, Villa La Angostura. What you see here is an isthmus. It's a, it's, a, it's a narrow part of the land that communicates the city with a peninsula. And that is what Angostura means. Angostura means narrow. So because of that narrow isthmus is why we call it Villa, village, Angostura, the narrow place. Um, the name of the isthmus, it is, and the peninsula, it is Quetrihue, and Quetrihue means where the Arashan lives. And you will ask me, Marina, what is an Arashan? Well, there you have the picture. These beautiful orange trees with a very cold bark, it's in the family of the middle. We have um, a very preserved forest of Arashanes. Bosques means forest, which uh, you can visit very easily from the city of Langostura. Either you can take a catamaran to the peninsula and start doing all the trails and walk back if you want. You can walk back to Villa Langostura. It's 12 kilometers or eight miles. 
and, um, and you can do all this trail in between the forest. You can do biking uh, back and forth if you are good trained and you would like to do it instead of taking the catamaran, but it's a uniqueness a spot, the Bosque de Arrayanes. The ski resort for this area, it's called Vashu, and it's about 1,700 meters hike, which is about 5,600 feet. Uh, sorry, I'm very used to metric system, so I did my math uh, on a paper <laughs> to try and make it easier. I, I hope this is helpful for you. Um, of course, we have the seven lakes that I mentioned. Here you can see part of the ski resorts. This year, especially, I think it's because there's less human being moving around. We are having the best snow season and we cannot take advantage of it because of the quarantine. So people are very stressed about it. Um, speaking about gastronomy, sorry again to the vegetarians and vegans. One of the most delicious dishes is the Patagonian lamb. Uh, it's not a strong flavor. I know when you hear lamb, you get scared because this is, is a kind of a strong flavor meat. But in fact, the Patagonian one is so well prepared with the very right condiments and very slow cooked. That is really delicious. We can eat trout, salmon, smoked products. And we can have, because we had the immigrants, remember the Germans in the center, we had the Italians and Swiss coming to Patagonia and gave us the heritage of the chocolates, fondues, uh, we have waffles, we have delicious chocolate in Patagonia, and the berries. Well, you're seeing cherries there, but in fact, in this region, you can find the most great variety of berries elderberries, blackberries, blueberries, and the uh, star of the region, it is the rose hip. Um, we consume a lot of rose hip, even on cosmetic products. And of course, people consume a lot of beer, because here we have very good craft beer. There are breweries, we get the host, and we can make the most delicious artisan beers with all the flavors, even berries included into it. Um, there is a special dish. In fact, this one we adopted it from our um, uh, Chilean friends, from our uh, neighbors, and it comes from the ancient Mapuches, which is burying the food in the ground. Uh, you have uh, you put different vegetables, you put different cuts of meat, you cover it, and you cook in between very hot stones. It's called curanto. But this was adopted. It's very consumed in in cold days in Patagonia in family. Uh, communities, uh, but it's uh, something we inherited from our neighbors. I don't know if you've heard, but this year we have another sun eclipse, and it's happening the 14th of December, and one of the best spots to see the eclipse is going to be Patagonia. Many places in Patagonia are already prepared hopes uh, that we will be able to open our, our borders and our flights to receive you and this major event that next time it happens it will be in a long time 300 years uh, or more so it's a very unique experience we are living the uh, andean side of the patagonia the lakes region the mountains the andes the alpine uh, kind of constructions the chocolates and we are moving towards the atlantic ocean we are coming to another spectacular, I know that I repeat a lot these words, but my friends, I'm so in love with my country. This is Puerto Madryn. What you need to do is to fly to the city of Trelew, and, or Trelew, because it is Welsh community, and you drive to Puerto Madryn, which is the entrance to all the beauty animal I'm about to show you. It's only 80 kilometers, I mean like, 60 miles to get to Puerto Madryn and the city is in a fantastic location on the it's a gulf here that little hole is a gulf it is called the new gulf and they have a very beautiful promenade very good quality resto restaurants hotels accommodations it is a very good spot to stay um, all this area was founded by a Welsh community by the 1800s, so we have a strong influence of them. I will tell you about it. And this is something you can practice in Puerto Madryn. We know it as the capital of diving because we have 
different activities. This is not exactly diving. This is a snorkeling with the sea lions. There's a lot of fauna very handy in the sea lions, elephant seals, penguins, whales, that you can just see them by walking on the promenade or biking on the promenade. Well, this is one activity you can do. It's a low difficulty activity. It's a snorkeling with the sea lions. It's beautiful. Look at that. It's an experience. Mm. Uh, we have other activities in the water. That's another one you see. Wow. What a chance, eh? The waters are very clear in this gulf, uh, very transparent, so you can see the species. Uh, we have the fur sea lion, the sea lion. And uh, oh, before I go there, sorry. Um, in Puerto Madryn, the other activity you can do is your baptism in diving. Even if you're not an expert certificate, these uh, activities, you can do them all year round, the snorkeling with the sea lions, the submarine, uh, I'm sorry, submarine, the diving baptism, you can do it all year round. And if you are a certificate uh, diver, well, you can practice diving there in the same gulf. Here, uh, you see kayaking, because the other activity you can do is kayak kayaking with the sea lions and with the whales. That's another chance. You know that from uh, March to November, December, more or less, we have the whales coming close to the coast because they come to give birth to their calf, to their babies, and you can see the whales very close to you, even from the coast of the city or doing this nautical activities I'm mentioning. Um, for getting to this spot, you see the name Peninsula Valdez. Again, you need to cross an isthmus of a narrow portion of land. And the first things you see are different look at points in order to get to Peninsula uh, Valdez, to, to the end of Peninsula Valdez. Uh, the peninsula has like look at points, we call them the caletas. Uh, this kind of uh, geographical accidents permit you to see the island of the birds. Uh, of course, you have all seabirds there, gulls, cormorants. You see the colonies of sea lions, you see the colonies of uh, elephant seals. So you do stops and you visit all of these colonies along the same road. This is going east from Puerto Madryn towards the Peninsula Valdez, which is, by the way, another UNESCO natural heritage of the world. There you have the other one. And um, you can reach Puerto Pirámides, where your experience will be finding the whales. Those are humpback whales. Time to time we can see the orcas. The orca whales can get to the area too, but a little uh, more to the outside part, to, to a place called uh, Punta Norte. But uh, you can see the humpback whales by uh, navigation. What Okay, Marina, we still have some. What we do is get into uh, Puerto Pirámides. We do a navigation close to the wells. Of course, captains are very aware not to disturb the nature. Ariel? Yes, yes. You have a G day, one, but we are very close to finish. You are moving the presentation, don't worry. Yes. So we are going to show the calendar okay. with all the fauna. Um, Ah, uh, sorry. Okay, there we go. Uh, the calendar will help you to identify in which months you can see the different animals. Uh, because we, well, we passed the we passed the penguins. You saw the penguins? Yes. No. Okay. The major, uh, the the biggest community in the continent of uh, Magellanic penguins is located here in Punta Tombo. It's a different uh, tour. It's going south. It's not the same peninsula. There you have the calendar. And the last thing I'd like to tell you about this area, as I mentioned, uh, we have a, a submerged wine cellar. There you can see the, the picture where you can get your bottle of wine. And of course, the gastronomy here is more related to seafood. Uh, you have prawns, you have clams, you have uh, shrimps, uh, fishes too. Um, and the last uh, one will be referring to the Welsh uh, influence. We have a city called Gaiman, which is south of Trelew, where we can assist to 
uh, or we can visit. The houses of the Welsh community is the only place in the world outside uh, Wales where uh, Welsh is spoken as a main language, I mean, apart from Spanish. And of course, we can have a delicious Welsh tea. Um, I'm back in the map of the provinces of the regions, uh, just to uh, show you again how we divide our touristic regions. Remember, we started by the Litoral, the Mesopotamian region in a green color. We move to the north, towards the west, towards the Andes, uh, on the uh, yellowish area of the north, with a the color the Peninsula Valdez. And this closes our loop, our presentation. Um, I hope this uh, will give you a lot of extra information and invites you to tell your clients that we you're more than welcome and we're very pleased to receive you. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I'm sorry if there was any delay, you know, that connectivity is kind of hard in case of Wi-Fi, but um, thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Marina. It was a pleasure. We know that we have some problems, but we really appreciate this presentation. But we are really on time. I just invite Eduardo and you to turn on the, the webcam to say goodbye. And I would like to thank you to all the people in the other side. We are going to reply all the answer uh, you through email. So we are going to answer to you very soon. Uh, so thanks a lot. And thank you, Marina. Thank you, Eduardo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Marina, for this beautiful presentation, and thank you for everybody who are sharing with us in the other side of the uh, of the screen. Okay, so hope to see you soon, and we keep in touch. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hoy te invitamos a que viajes. Si sí, escuchaste bien, a que viajes con la mente. Que cierres los ojos y te veas en un avión viajando a ese lugar que tanto soñaste. Qué linda sensación, ¿no? De libertad, de aventura, con esa adrenalina de conocer una maravilla natural. Montañas, lagos, salinas. Sentir la sensación de caminar sobre un glaciar o de llegar al fin del mundo. Todo está en tu mente. Podés llegar, solo tenés que soñarlo para que pronto se haga realidad. Desde tu casa, solo, en familia o con amigos, porque aunque estemos distanciados, hoy estamos más cerca que nunca, soñando un mismo sueño. Viaja desde tu casa.